Hello, this is Jesse Nichols. Um, I'm here in the Grist Studio workshop, which is definitely not just the other wall of our studio that we normally film in. Today, we are going to be building a Raspberry Pi particulate matter air pollution sensor, which is the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which has Wi-Fi, that's what the W stands for, a pin connector, this is called an Enviro Plus P-Hat. Some people call it a fat, but I'm not like that. It comes from Pimeroni. And then when you plug in this little air pollution sensor, it can sense particulate matter. All of this was probably less than $100. Another disclaimer is that I have no experience with Raspberry Pi. So I'm a total novice. Uh, this is a shot in the dark. Pimeroni has an instruction manual that I'm working off of. Um, so I'm hoping it's good because otherwise this will be a total failure in the name of science. So the first step is I'm going to be taking this solderless pin connector and hammering it onto this Raspberry Pi board. So it should be easier than doing 40 solders but it's also requiring me to take a hammer to electronic equipment. So um, we'll see how this goes. This little jig is kind of helpful um, so I don't bend the pins, fingers crossed. All right, now that's looking really good. So now the next step will be plugging this in. And so this is an Enviro Plus hat. So now I'm going to plug this in. Uh, the instructions say there's only one way to plug it in, so if it's not going in, you're probably doing it wrong. You know what I might do is just take like a screwdriver or some pliers or something. There's only one way to plug it in, so if it's not going in, you're probably doing it wrong. You're probably doing it wrong. You're probably doing it wrong. I gave it the old college try. Sure. Let me just look at this. There. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Okay, so with the help of my trusty cameraman, Daniel Penner, we are able to get this plugged in. Now we'll see if this actually worked. Um, and if not, we'll go back to the drawing board. So um, I have a USB port. It has a little Bluetooth guy right here um, that's connecting to this keyboard. And that's gonna plug into here. There's the HDMI. And then we have a power cord down there. All right, and there is a green light on here. The next step is to download some uh, software so that it can actually communicate with this new board and type the following https colon slash slash so it's installed um, these python scripts and such um, so that's there now that's cool so i'm gonna go into the terminal i'm trying to open the python scripts in terminal Oh, there we go. <laughs> cool. Okay, this is really cool. So I got it to work. Okay, so now it's up and running and I'm gonna go out into the field to test it out. So I'm here at Jefferson Park in Seattle and the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency's official air monitor is right over there. So this is where they do actual regulatory air monitoring. Um, there were some employees there who actually kindly gave me the real-time particulate matter count, which was 11.1 micrograms per cubic meter. Um, and so I have this right here, and I brought it up to compare. And right now, the PM 2.5 reading is actually 11 micrograms per cubic meter, but it's um, fluctuating between 15 and 10, that kind of range. So it's the right ballpark, but I wouldn't put too much faith in the precision. It's definitely not giving me decimal point precision like the real air monitor right over there. 
but for getting ballpark ranges or for educational purposes or for me wondering whether I should go for a run if there's wildfire smoke, um, this thing seems to do a decent job. And if you want to learn more about how these low-cost air sensors are shaking up the world of science, uh, we have an explainer video which you can see in the description. Thanks for watching.